day without coffee. My patches keep falling off the wall. I'm gonna have to hot glue them or something, but we need more. Yeah, the police academy. Good times, good times. So you probably clicked on this video because, well, you're either going into the police academy or considering going to the police academy. And I'm here to fill you in on what it's gonna be like. So let's start from day one. Still got a little PTSD from that day. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's not that bad. But your first day, if you're like me, I was very young, not really sure what the heck I was doing. Next thing I know, I'm in this classroom in this uniform and holy crap, it's going down, right? I'm here, I, it's, it's happening, I'm in a police academy. Something I never thought I'd do when I was growing up is become a police officer. Kind of just said, I want a life of action and I don't want to sit at a desk. So here I am. So anyways, day one, you're sitting there, you got your nice uniform on. You know, I talk about all of these things in previous videos, guys, and as I come across similar things, I'm going to link those videos up here. So if you want to jump over to those videos and come back, perfectly cool. Yeah, that way you get all your information if you have any questions. And if I miss anything in any of those videos, leave me a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer it for you. So you're sitting there day one in class, nervous as hell because you don't know what to expect. Well, I'm here to give you a little bit of insight. It's going to be very straightforward, very serious at first. Nobody knows each other. It's just like school. It's just like when you go to school, a new school for the first time, you're sitting in class, you don't know anybody and you have no friends. Unless you're lucky to go to the academy with somebody you know, that's going to be helpful. But I didn't know anybody. But by the end, you're going to make good friends. You're going to make enemies. <laughs> But you're gonna make friends, don't worry. You'll, you'll, you'll associate with some people, maybe the whole class. Now, I'm trying to just recall most of this stuff from memory. Now, it's been over nine years since I've been to a police academy, so bear with me. Well, this is just how my academy worked. It could work slightly different for other academies, but I think it's gonna be very similar. This is paramilitary, so you are gonna get yelled at, you are gonna have to clip, uh, keep a crisp uniform, and that means like little threads on your uniform. You make sure you snip those off, make sure it's nice and ironed. You're gonna have to do that for every day. But you're sitting in class, don't know anybody. You get into basically introductions. Right off the bat, they're gonna make you stand up and introduce yourself, at least they should. Oh, and backtracking before you get to class, make sure you're not late. Don't be late ever. The whole time in the academy, don't be late but especially on day one. If you're late on day one, see you later. You're out of the academy. Get there an hour early before you actually have to be there. Now, if you're trying to say that a crash happened or something like that, remember that these instructors are also law enforcement officers and they're all connected to the law enforcement grid and they'll find out if there was actually a crash there. And if there wasn't, bye-bye, because -bye. lying's not gonna be tolerated either, All right, So don't, don't mess up the first day. Get there, plenty of time to spare. And on time, so you guys know, is not on the time you're supposed to be there. It's 10 minutes or more earlier. So anyways, we're back in class. Your whole class is a team and everything in this academy is team effort. So if somebody's not following the rules, which you'll get the list of rules day one, right? If somebody doesn't follow those rules, everybody feels the consequences of those. I'll give you an example. We have a specific rule about cell phones during certain times of the class, right? You can't have your cell phone. One of the students had their cell phone out at the incorrect time and got busted. We all had to pay for it. And an example of paying for it will either be physical or a memo. Memos are there for you to write and justify reasons of why you did something, why you were late, or why that other person did this and how it could be improved. Now, this time we had to do something physical. We were in our nice white uniforms. We had a white shirts, black pants, and we all had to go outside and the grass was still dewy and wet and we had to hold planks. We held whole planks for a long time and it sucked. And it's all because of one person. So don't be that person. Follow the rules, pay attention. If you really wanna be a police officer, stay focused and you'll do just fine. It gets a little more lax towards the end. You guys all start to get to know each other. You get familiar with the instructor. I mean, it's still gonna be pushing you. It's still gonna be, you know, hard work, studying and everything, but you will get to know each other a little better and it kind of gets a little bit more relaxed towards the end. Okay, so in the mornings, you're gonna be working with this book. This is, I think, last year's model. I think they actually just updated it, but it's gonna be very similar. It might just look a little different inside. Don't fear, same concepts apply that I'm gonna give to you. Each section is gonna be covered differently. There's some sections that are gonna be covered with just your, your standard instructor, your main instructor, who's gonna be with you through the entire part of the academy, all right? That's like your teacher in school. It's not really like high school or anything where you like rotate out to different teachers unless it's a different subject. So let's say first aid, for example, 
example. Your instructor is not gonna teach you first aid, they're gonna bring somebody in from the outside to teach that. So you're gonna have somebody come in who signed up to be an instructor in first aid for that police academy, and they're gonna teach you first aid. Same thing with your firearms and your vehicle ops, right? Those are gonna be kind of outside people that you don't really see every day. So on the note of firearms and vehicle ops, your schedule throughout the academy should be like eight to five, it could be it could be alter, it could be seven, seven to four, depending on where you're at. But standardly, it's like eight to five, Monday through Friday. It switches when you go to firearms. So you go to firearms, you're gonna have to have a night qualification. So one of those nights, you're gonna probably be there from like two to 10. And you're gonna have to drive to wherever the location is that they're doing the firearms. So you need to give yourself some time to get there. Same thing with vehicle ops. You're gonna have to have a, a nighttime driving course at vehicle ops as well. So most of the time it's gonna be there in the day, but then you're gonna have one day that's gonna be falling into the night so you know how to drive night. Those blocks are typically just a week long. Now, this book is, is gonna be like your Bible and this one too, but we'll get to this one in a minute. You need to pay attention to everything in this book. And don't think like I did that the first test is it's gonna be easy. I mean, how hard could it be, really? That's what I thought, and I failed the test. And just so you know, I think you can only fail one test. So you only get one retake throughout the entire academy, and there are several tests throughout the entire academy. So you can only fail once, and you get one retake. You can save that retake, you know, throughout the whole time to wait till the end, or you can use it right away. If you fail once again, you have to complete a memo to see if they'll let you retake that test. If you can't retake that test, and they don't let you, you will have to come back and recertify later on. So say you complete the academy, but say you didn't pass vehicle ops. Well, you'll have to come back to the next academy class just for that block of vehicle ops to pass it. We had somebody come in, I think it was either vehicle ops or firearms, I think it was vehicle ops, had to come in and, and do that and, and, and go to the class with us. We're like, who the heck is this kid? You know, he's been here the whole time. He just comes in and does vehicle ops. But this is the holy grail. You have to pass your tests, okay? So don't fail any of them. And how do you do that? is by paying attention and reading okay this is how i did it i thought i i knew what I, I read i thought i was like you know what this doesn't seem too hard let's just take the test and they didn't study that much well i failed that test and that sunk me i was like okay this is for real i can't mess this up i really want to do this gotta stay focused so i did i switched my whole thing up and i studied and what i ended up doing is just reading and reading and reading. So I would take the chapter and sections that we we were gonna go over and I would just read it, the entire thing, and then I would read it again. Came to a point where like I was taking the test and it was verbatim out of the book and I could just recall it from the book or what I read. But another thing you could do to really help you is the, all of the, the test questions are typically uh, brought forth from the object objectives in the book. So if you can answer the objectives and understand all these objectives, there's a good chance you are going to do just fine on the test. Here's the objectives here. In the new books, it's still gray, but it's actually like throughout the chapter instead of like right in the beginning. It's kind of helpful in a sense because you read that chapter and then you read this little gray area and you're like, okay, that's something that I really need to understand and know. So pay attention to those objectives. Nobody's gonna do this stuff for you. Nobody's gonna give you the answers. You need to study. What I recommend is understand those objectives, but also also read the chapter at least twice. Uh, other things that's gonna happen is you're gonna get assigned team leaders. Some academies rotate these team, real, team leader roles out, some just assign them. When I went through, they were just assigned. So we signed team leaders and then you sign a team captain who's like the head of everybody, right? Uh, these roles are taken into effect on certain parts of the class. PT, you're gonna be in front of the class as a team captain and you're gonna be guiding people through the stretching exercises and everything like that to get everybody warmed up. I didn't do any of those roles. <laughs> I was like, you know, I don't want any of that responsibility. I just wanna make it through, okay? I just wanna survive. <laughs> and so I didn't really opt to, to be a team leader or anything like that. That just wasn't me at the time. Now, I would certainly do it. I've totally gone a long way since uh, the academy. But somebody else did it and they did a phenomenal job uh, doing that. And they were also responsible for making sure everybody in the class was staying in order, things like that, right? Remember that academy is gonna be stressful. It's made that way, all right? They're gonna yell at you, it's gonna be strict. It's made to, to stress you out and see if you can handle it. Because if you can't handle the academy, it's gonna be hard for you in the real world. Anyways, very, very important that you pay attention and, and study, okay? High liability, all right? So this is gonna be part of like your PT. So your PT is gonna be like running, and running, and running, and more running. You're gonna have to run a lot. So if you're not 
doing that now, start running. I recommend running three miles, at least three times a week to get you warmed up because you're going to run a lot. At least we did in my academy every day. So usually you're gonna start off with that run. Well, you start off with stretches and your classes will stretch and then you're gonna go out and you're gonna run. And then you're gonna jump right into some other things. You're gonna jump into push-ups. You're gonna jump into doing the O course. O course is an obstacle course. Walls, fences, things you gotta jump over, monkey bars, things you gotta climb. Now, if you can't do any of those things and you struggle, it's gonna be very hard for you. If you're hanging in the back of the pack when the runs, you're gonna get yelled at a lot. Your team might suffer for it if you're way behind the time. And after you've done all your PT, tired and exhausted, you're gonna get into your high liability stuff. A lot of this is gonna be DT moves and so forth like it's got little pictures in here some of these might have some written tests with them can't remember if they all had written tests or not they may they may not um, but I do remember that these tests were a lot easier and most of them were just actually physically doing it showing that you were competent in it like so say like a knife grab this is how you block a knife this is how you you rotate and turn it and all these different things you just have to show proficiency in those areas to pass but it's gonna get to a point eventually towards the end of the Academy where you're actually going to fight put pads on and gloves gloves and you're gonna fight each other. I mean, you might have pads and gloves on, but you're fighting, you know, not like play fighting, like you're actually fighting. Some people got knocked out, some people got bloody noses. So yeah, that's, that's real world stuff. They're trying to get you prepared for the real world and that's, that's the stuff that's gonna happen, could happen, right? So while you're fighting, you have to complete these moves. So like the one I just talked about, like the knife move. So he's gonna throw a knife into the fight. A person's gonna drive, grab the knife and you have to try to disarm that knife in that person and showing proficiency in the move that you learned throughout the academy. Oh, that sucked. Because I had to go back in a second time, not for my fault, for somebody else's fault, because nobody else wanted to fight this dude uh, because he was ridiculous. Yeah, had to go back in and fight him again just so he could complete the moves and pass. That guy never became a cop, by the way. So, so not only a DT going to be part of high liability, but it's also gonna be like firearms, like, you know, how the firearm operates, how do you stand and everything like that but it's full of good information breaks down all fire, like how firearms operate how you know ammunition operates because if you've never dealt with a firearm before and you're getting into law enforcement it's really good to to know these things uh it teaches you proper handcuffing everything like that so you're not just going to read the book and know how to properly handcuff and how to properly handle a firearm you're actually on physically going to do these things. You need to physically show that you can do these things, not just know that you understand them in a book because if they do that, put you out into the real world, that's not benefiting you whatsoever. That's gonna get you hurt. So on the note of your physical training, you need to make sure that you're, you're having a good diet. One of the mistakes that some people made, I made, is in the beginning is that I, I would, you know, go get something to eat and it was crappy. But I learned really quickly that that affected your performance substantially and it made you feel sick or you got sick. So I started packing my lunches and I started packing healthy lunches. Like I would just have a clean sandwich, like a peanut butter and jelly or something like that, uh, a salad or something on the side. Get rid of like greasy foods, heavy foods. Don't eat that stuff because you will notice that it will affect you and your performance will get a lot better if you start eating a lot cleaner. That's what I noticed. What else? Hmm, lots of running, planks, all right, anyways, enough of that. Let's talk about Firearms Week, which is also Spray Week. It was for us, okay? It might be different for you, but at some point in the academy, you are going to get sprayed, and depending on your academy, you might get tased as well. Now, these things happen again once you get hired at a police department, which sucks, but you just gotta get through it. So, let me tell you a little story about when I got sprayed. You do it at you do it at firearms for us because it incorporated actual life shooting after you got sprayed directly in the eyes. Clear glasses. Put them on your face. Tilt them down and they spray directly in your eyes. I mean, your eyes are closed. They wouldn't spray directly in your eyeballs. That's not good. Don't do that. And then you have to handcuff somebody. Get down, handcuff somebody, and then you have to double lock the handcuffs. What double locking is makes them so they don't continue to pinch down. And you're like this, trying to do this, and it sucks, man. Your face is on fire. It, it's, it's miserable. Then you gotta get up from that and you gotta fight off somebody, right? This person has a pad. You have to find a baton that's on the ground, pick it up, and hit the bag. Then I had to run over, grab eyes and ears, right? So put my eyes and ears on, run over and grab a shotgun, combat load a shotgun, combat load is taking a round, loading it right there and firing at a steel target. Yeah, with pepper spray in your eyes. Yeah, it's great. Hit the target, you got to go over and then you have to do a sequence of three targets, two rounds in each target. Load it, two rounds, you're out, got to reload, two rounds, out, reload, two rounds, right? 
So after you do that, you gotta sprint down to the finish line. Not the finish line is a hose pouring ice cold water out of it. And you're like, yes, this is it. I'm done. Let me wash this stuff off my face. Get over it, right? Well, I'm gonna tell you a little secret that nobody told me is that when you put that water on your face, everything locks up and you cannot breathe. It's the weirdest feeling, but <clears throat> It's like, uh, you, can't, you can't breathe, it sucks. So you're trying to wash your face off and then you gotta pick it away, take a couple breaths. Cause this is after you just sprinted and done all this stressful stuff. I give you some Dawn soap. And another tip I'm gonna tell you, because this is why it was one of the worst days for me, is that you need to be very careful about rubbing your eyes. So if you take that Dawn soap, gently put it over your face, don't rub your eye because I ended up scratching my eye. Yeah. So that, that sucked. Afterwards, you run over to a big giant fan that they have there. So hopefully they have some kind of fan. And we were just like sitting there like this, trying to just get some relief. And that was the best feeling ever was sitting by the fan. But unfortunately, since I scratched my eye, I couldn't open it. It was annoying and painful. I ended up actually going home and then I got home and my wife's like, okay, we need to take you to the hospital and get your, get your eye checked out because we don't know what, what you did. And sure enough, that's where I found out that I scratched it, they put dye crap in my eye. They poured milk in it, which felt incredible. <laughs> but yeah, there was that. And then you have to come into a classroom the next day and it's funny because everybody, his eyes are bloodshot. You're just sitting in class like this, with the bright lights on. I swear they do it on purpose. So yeah, getting sprayed sucks, man. It sucks. <laughs> But uh, you'll get through it, all right? And if you listen to my tips, you won't scratch your eye. Vehicle ops was a real fun time. There's a point in it where you actually uh, go into what they call blacktop. They pour a bunch of water on it and you lose control of the vehicle and you have to regain control. They want you to know what that feels like so you don't lose control out in the field and crash really badly. And that was a lot of fun because you're just spinning out of control and the instructors had a good time with it as well. Yeah, that's pretty much the academy in a nutshell. Pay attention to the rules, good diet. Make sure you're working on your physical ability now. Don't slack off, don't be late. Stay focused, keep everything just focused on the academy during that time. Don't go out and, and party and stuff. A uh, little tidbit, we had somebody go out and do this. They were at like a club or something one night and then some kind of argument took place and he like flashed his academy badge. Like, who the hell are you, right? Well, that person's gonna recognize that academy badge most likely because they're gonna be in that area and they're gonna call up the head of the academy and say, hey, uh, we just had this guy flash his academy badge at us after getting in a fight or being involved in some kind of altercation at the bar. So yeah, that that's not good. That's a good way to get yourself kicked out of the academy. Be responsible, guys. It's not a time to party. It's a time to focus. It's a time to, to pretty much change the course of your life. Because if that's the life you're living now, you go out and party a lot, things like that, it's gonna change. And it needs to change if you're gonna wanna do this. So that's that's what to expect, guys, uh, in the Police Academy. I hope I covered enough. I hope this video wasn't too long and, and not boring. I tried to keep it interesting. But yeah, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, you know what to do, leave them down below in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.